Hello and welcome to my talk. My name is Till Knollmann and I'm going to talk about the online multi-commodity facility location problem today. This problem is based on the famous facility location problem. Let me explain that first. We are given a metric space with a point set M, which are the dots in the figure, and we are given a request set R of requests located at the metric space points. Those are the darker dots in the figure. An algorithm has now to define a set of facilities placed at the points of the metric space and assign each request to a facility, for example like this. Every time we construct a facility at a point, for example M, we pay a price Fm. And every time we connect a request R to a facility located at M, we pay a price which is the distance between M and R in the metric space as an assignment cost. The overall goal is to minimize the total assignment and construction cost. This problem has been studied on a lot. However, it has one crucial assumption, namely that all the requests ask for the same single commodity. They all ask, for example, for a blue drink. And the facilities also only offer blue drinks. However, in real world, there might be requests that ask for green drinks or yellow ones or a blue and a yellow one. So this brings us to the multi-commodity facility location. Here we're given additionally a set of commodities S and each request asks for a subset of commodities. Also the facilities offer a subset of commodities, a configuration, we call it Sigma. And whenever you place a facility at a point M in a configuration sigma, your cost now is Fm sigma. The task is now to assign each request to a set of facilities jointly offering all the commodities that are requested. And you can see here now that there is a request for a blue and a green drink, and it has to pay the assignment cost to a facility offering him the green drink and one offering him the blue drink. And there is a request now asking for a blue and a yellow drink and it can, all, it can get all its commodities from a single facility so it only pays the connection to the facility once. We are especially interested in the online case where the requests are not there in the beginning but they arrive over time. In total there are n many requests and when a request arrives, at that point only, you get to know where it will be and which commodities it requests. And then the algorithm fighting against this input has to immediately assign this request to a set of facilities jointly offering the commodities. And the decision where it places facilities, in which configuration it places facilities, and how we connect a request to, to a set of facilities, these decisions are done irrevocably. They cannot be changed later on. So that means that over time you can make mistakes. For example, in this scenario, it might have been worthwhile to include the yellow drink in the upper facility as well and to connect the two upper requests to that facility. However, since you didn't know that you will build the facility there, you did not do this, so you paid maybe more than you could have. And we want to analyze the competitive ratio, which is simply the ratio of an algorithm fighting against this online input, not knowing what's going to happen, to the uh, cost of a solution which knows everything beforehand, which could have simply built that facility as in the figure there, because it knew that there will be some requests that are going to need the blue type there. Commodity. So, what do we know about this problem in our case? Actually, nearly nothing. We know some things are from the online facility location problem. Among others, we know that there is a lower bound by Fotakis, presented in 2008. And we know that there is a randomized algorithm by Meyerson and a deterministic algorithm by Fotakis, which both meet this lower bound. And there's also additionally a uh, a deterministic algorithm by Fotakis having an upper bound of O of log n. We can trivially just take the lower bound from online facility location for our problem as well, since we generalize the problem. And you could also say that you can simply, for each commodity separately, 
run an instance of facility location and then you get this trivial upper bound there. In our work, we had a closer look at this and we found a lower bound which also incorporates the number of commodities. And we found two algorithms, a deterministic one and a randomized one with a non-trivial competitive ratio. They both work if we have some slight condition on the construction cost function. Namely, it tells you that the average construction cost per type you offer, per commodity you offer, sorry, is minimal if you include all commodities. The deterministic algorithm we have here is based on the one of Fotakis uh, presented in 2007. And the randomized algorithm we constructed is based on the, cons on the randomized algorithm of Myerson for the original problems, but they include some tricks to deal with these commodities. Okay, so let's start with the lower bound. We are only considering a single point in our lower bound because in the original problem, you try to trick the algorithm by moving through space, but we want to trick the algorithm not into some direction in space, but we want to trick it into constructing facilities offering the wrong commodities. Consider a cost function S to the uh, left. Here it is as follows. The function is only depending on the size of the configuration and um, it is constant for the first squared of S commodities, then it goes up a little bit, then it's constant again for the next squared of S commodities, then it goes up again and so on. So what happens here if you ask for a single commodity, an online algorithm is more or less forced to purchase facilities with square root of S commodities. Because if you ask for a single commodity, it's simply not um, it's simply not smart to not include square root of S commodities because you get them for free. And if you include more than square root of S commodities, at some point you get a uh, dependency on square root of S, which you would like to avoid. Also, the algorithm now, if it's in the online case, does not know which ones it should include. This is critical. Now let's look at the sequence we want to define here. We will compare it to a deterministic online algorithm because this is easier to do. We simply ask square root of as many times for a not yet covered commodity. So you begin, you ask for a commodity. The algorithm builds a facility serving square root of s commodities. You ask for another commodity not yet covered and the algorithm constructs another facility. Then you ask again for a commodity not yet covered. And you can repeat that square root of as many times, since each time the algorithm covers square root of s commodities. So after square root of s many times, the algorithm actually covered everything by square root of s, by square root of s facilities. An optimal solution could have simply placed a single facility, uh, only picking exactly the type, the commodities which are going to be requested. So we're omega of squared of s competitive here. Good. How do we counter this lower bound? The idea here is to say for the first square root of s commodities, we will only place facilities only serving that single commodity that has been requested one by one. And afterwards, we're going to serve all the commodities immediately. Why can we do that? Well, after square root of s commodities have been requested, we know that the optimal solution will have a cost, which is fmx, where x is at least the size of square root of s. And we know that covering everything can be done by only an additional factor of square root of s, since you could simply place square root of s many facilities serving square root of s many commodities each. Good. So we have two main observations based on this lower bound here. The first thing is that any algorithm has to predict, it has to include commodities which were not yet been requested. Because if you don't do that, you can simply ask for, a commod for the commodities one by one, and the algorithm will construct a lot of facilities, linearly in as many. While an optimal solution could simply combine all of them and have a very low price, maybe only constant. Additionally, we know that facilities for a single or all commodities are sufficient to consider if you have this condition that I introduced earlier. We will call a facility serving a single commodity a small one and a facility serving all commodities a large one. 
So now let's think about an algorithm. Since this is an optimization problem, let's look at the linear programs. For the primal, we can see if you compare the online facility location problem to our problem, well, basically it gets very complicated. However, if you consider the dual, things look very similar. There are only minor things which are different. The main point is here that in the original problem, you had a dual variable AR for each request R. And now we have a dual variable ARE for each commodity E requested by a request R. And the good news is that for the dual variable, for the dual program in the online facility location case, there is an algorithm presented by Fotakis. So let's have a look at what he did there. The overall idea is the following. You look at the request R and the, at the facility FR, which is the closest to R, not the one which R is connected to. And now R invests into M this blue part there. This can be seen as the improvement R would have if there would be a facility at M, so the desire of R to have a facility there. You do that for every request, so this guy invests the other blue part and there's maybe this guy as well. And as soon as this total investment uh, reaches the price for simply placing a facility at that point, M, you will do that. Of course, you cannot reconnect the requests later on to that facility, but somehow all the requests express their desire to have a facility there, which has become in total so high that you could afford to build one. And this algorithm is shown to be O of log N competitive. If I write it down a little bit differently, you can see that this is actually a primal dual algorithm. If a request R arrives, you raise the a variable AR until either you afford to connect the request to the closest facility possibly serving it, or you are able to connect to some intermediate point M, and together with the investment of earlier requests, you were able to afford constructing a facility there. And then you build that facility and connect the request. Can we just take this algorithm now and somehow adapt it to our case? Not so easy. There are some problems here, namely that there is now a set of facilities that serve R. And these serving facilities have different non-disjoint configurations, so it's not so clear how much should we put or how much should we invest into M for each commodity or for a combination. And then we don't know which configuration should we at least then offer at M if we decide to construct something there. So this is very complex somehow. And it gets very much easier if you remember the lower bound. If you have this small condition on the construction cost, facilities for a single or all commodities are sufficient, so small and large ones. So we will do that and we will do the following. We will have a look at each commodity of a request. Let's take E1 and we will just do it as for each commodity separately as Fotakis did. So we look at R at the closest facility FE1 that could serve the commodity E1 for R and we invest into M the smaller blue part which is the desire of R to place a facility at M offering the commodity E1. Additionally, so we do that for each commodity separately, additionally we look at the closest large facility serving all the commodities FS and we invest into M the desire of R to place a large facility at that point. Written down as a primal dual algorithm, you can see it's written down below. You raise all the AREs until either you afford to connect to a small facility for some commodity or all the commodities together afforded, I'm sorry, afforded to connect to a large facility or you were able to connect to an intermediate point and construct a small facility there, or you were able to connect to some intermediate point and construct a large facility there. You have to note here that in each case we are considering a large facility, all the commodities of R together invest their variable ARE, because they all benefit from a large facility because the connection cost uh, that R pays to be connected to the large facilities only paid once. Good, so I'm not going to the analysis now, but I'm just 
briefly uh, sketch it. So the general idea is that uh, you can show that the cost of an algorithm solution is bounded by the sum over all dual variables. And then you can show that if you divide the dual variables by 5 square root of s log n, you will get to a feasible dual solution. And since any feasible dual solution lower bounds um, any primal solution, it also lower bounds an optimal solution. And you can show that the algorithm's competitive ratio is actually an O of square root of s log n. What we did additionally is, well, we thought that there's actually a lot of dependency between the cost function, the construction cost function, and the um, competitive ratio. So we had a look at this set of function here, uh, functions which depend on the size of configuration, so the size of sigma, to the x divided by 2, where x is some parameter between 0 and 1, can be uh, 0 and 2, can be anything. And this gives you the set of functions, um, I've drawn some below. So anything between a constant function for x equals 0 to a linear function for x equals 2. And in between, it's everything which is somewhat square rooty. So it actually, it's the square root function if you put in x equals 1. For this set of function, you can actually um, prove that you can parameterize the competitive ratio of our deterministic algorithm to x, like it's in the upper bound theorem. And you can parameterize our lower bound as well to, to be parameterized in x. And these two um, bounds may look somewhat confusing, so that's why I've drawn a figure. So let's now only consider the part of the competitive ratios which depends on s and not the parts which depends on log n or log log n or so. Uh, I've plotted here the lower bound and the upper bound. So the lower bound is the red one and the upper bound is the blue one. I plotted here the competitive ratio against the parameter x. And you can see that for x equals 0 and x equals 2, the competitive ratio is independent of s. This makes sense because if your, cons if your construction cost function is constant, there is no need to not include everything all the time. And if your construction function is uh, linear, you have no benefit, benefit from combining things. So you do not need to predict which commodities to put in your configuration. And in between, your competitive ratio becomes dependent on S. There's actually a peak at X equals 1, which is then um, depending on the fourth square root of s. Yes. So uh, this is nearly it. I want to briefly conclude everything. So we have talked about the online multi-commodity facility location problem. This has not been researched on as far as I know. So we started researching on that and we found that we can find a lower bound incorporating the number of commodities. And we can define both a deterministic and a randomized algorithm with a non-trivial competitive ratio based on some small assumption on the construction cost function. The obvious open, pro open problem is now to get rid of that assumption. And that goes somewhat hand in hand with defining an algorithm that builds not only small or large facilities. So there should be some cases where an algorithm has to construct a facility not including all the commodities, but not also not including only one commodity. For example, in cases where you have a lot of cheap commodities like chocolate bars and one very expensive one like diamond, it makes no sense to include diamond if it, if it has not been requested, but at some point you should combine your chocolate bars. Another question is, of course, can the gap between the lower and the upper bound be closed? And also there is the question if heterogeneity in other online problems can be introduced as well, because it seems like this has not been done that much until now. So this has been it from my side. I hope you enjoyed my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.